White rump vultures, which only 20 years ago were a common sight in the Indian subcontinent, are now a critically endangered species facing the threat of extinction. This species has declined by over 99% in the whole of South Asia. The main reason for this decline is the use of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug called diclofenac sodium for the treatment of domestic livestock. The vultures are exposed to this drug through the livestock carcasses on which they feed. Such contaminated carcasses result in kidney failure and visceral gout in vultures, which lead to their death within a few days. The drug is now banned in India for veterinary use, but widely available for human use. Many farmers and vets still use it, as it is cheaper than other drugs. Soar, the Society for Action Research, is an NGO based in Ahmedabad in Gujarat state. Its members are working for the conservation of vultures by creating active awareness and monitoring of vulture breeding and feeding sites in central Gujarat. One of their projects is to monitor the pundra poles located near nesting colonies of vultures. For many Indians, especially in Gujarat, the cow is a sacred animal. Just as humans may go to old people's homes in their advanced age, cows in India go to pundra poles where they are looked after and receive medical treatment. Most Pandrapoles are private and supported by donations, mainly from the Jain community. Many of them house hundreds of cows and other domestic animals. At first, a Pandrapole looks like any other cattle farm, except that these cows are not milked or butchered, and the bulls do not work in the fields. These cattle spend the rest of their lives just hanging around and chewing grass. When the animals die, and there are usually more than 20 deaths a day, their carcasses are dumped about 200 metres outside the gate of the Pundrapole. A separate community of skinners lives next to a Pundrapole who make their living from cattle skin. After they are skinned, the animals are left to the scavengers. Feral dogs are the main day predators, followed surprisingly by the black-headed or sacred ibis that is said to feed on the worms that eat the rotten flesh rather than on the meat itself. Another bird that is associated with carcass dumps and which, like the ibises, is attracted to the insects is the common hoopoo. Vultures are few, mainly Egyptian and white-rumped but there are also a few Eurasian griffins, a species of vulture that did not decline as badly as the white rumped from diclofenac poisoning. While the griffin and Egyptian vultures migrate and come to Gujarat mainly in winter, the white rumped vulture is a resident and has a few breeding colonies in and around Ahmedabad. The birds usually arrive at the Pandrapole by noon. After they feed, they fly to rest on nearby trees. Later, they fly back to their roosting grounds, which is where their nesting colony is. Most of the big pandrapoles have a water body with a few old trees in and next to them, which give shade and water to the cattle. These water bodies also support a nesting colony of painted storks and other birds. These storks start their breeding season in the later part of the monsoon. They form colonies, often with other large water birds, like black-headed ibis. Most of the white rump vultures that feed regularly at the Pandrapoles in central Gujarat nest in villages in Ahmedabad, Surendranagar and Mahesana districts. These vultures are used to living close to the human population. They build their nests on large trees in the backyards of houses and even on trees in the village square. Most of the nesting sites are located near village ponds where there are old, large trees, especially neem. Aditya Roy and his team from the Soar Foundation spend many hours explaining to the villagers of central Gujarat that support vulture breeding colonies the important role that vultures have in the ecology as part of their efforts to save India's vultures.